mijn huid en toen de Heer zo mensen met mij helpt. Mijn help kom ik van de Lord, dus hij heeft even een hurt. And I give him thanks, Lord, your grace and mercy brought us through this morning. We are living this moment because of you. We give you thanks, Jesus, that we can gather into your house once more to praise your name and to give you all the honor and the glory. And now that we are about to gather a portion of what you have given unto us, we ask you to bless each and every one. Those that have to give, bless them, and those that have not to give, bless them also. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is one of my favorites. And you know, I'm going to go with the hope of Jesus in the train that is on the ground. Humility by the world's definition of implies or diminishes self-confidence. 
confidence. But humility in the Bible means getting our confidence from God, who values and lo loves us more than we do. It means that we have to believe what God says about us over anyone else's opinion, including our own. It means that we have to embrace ourselves in Christ over who we are in the flesh. It is to be so free of concern for your own evil that you elevate, that we elevate those around us. And most of us understand hope as wishful thinking, meaning I hope something will happen. But this is not what the Bible means about hope. The biblical definition of hope is confident expectation. Hope is a firm assurance regarding things that are unclear or unknown. Without hope, life loses its meaning, and in that, there is no hope. So yes, of course, this statement is true. Service is marked by holiness, humility, and hope. And these are the things that we need to accept, acknowledge, and commit to as we become faithful stewards. And to close off, we have a truth. Your question. Servants are partners with God and not equals with God. What is your response to this day? Good morning. Being a servant, one first needs to know the master. A servant must be loyal, obedient, must worship, and should be willing and ready to carry out the will of the master. In John 15, our master made it clear that we are partners with him. He stated that we are no longer called servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, we are called friends because everything that he has learned from his father, he has shared with us. Hence, we are more servants. We are more, we are more than servants. We are partners that are grafted unto the master. He is the vine and we are the branches. Being in a partnership means that there is an agreement of vested mutual interest. One where all parties have one common goal, even the roles and responsibilities are different. An example of this partnership that we are called into is illustrated in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 5 through to 9 with Apollos and Paul, where one sowed the seed and the other watered it. From this, we can see that as stewards, as servants of God, we have our own ministry, and each ministry complements the other so that Christ's seed can be nurtured and his field filled. In this partnership, we are the laborers, the core workers together with God. It is his husbandry, his field. If it is God's field and he is the one who enables the seed to grow, then he is the master. Therefore, laborers cannot consider themselves equal with God. In this partnership between God and man, he made it clear in Isaiah 40, verse 12 to 31, there is no equal with God. If we cannot hold the oceans in our hand, put the mountains on scale, and hold the earth as though it is a grain of sand, then we cannot equate ourselves with God. God is compared to none. His ways and his thoughts are higher than ours, and is recorded in Exodus and Isaiah. Therefore, servants are just partners with God. They are, they are not equal. So, we should just humble ourselves and give God all the glory that He deserves. So, here we have it. Service to God is, very, is a very important duty of us to all. It is the hope that all of us will serve Christ. It is the hope that all of us will serve as Christ. Will. We will continue to worship God as we listen and respond to the word of God. And that word of God will be, will be read by Sister Beverly MacDonald and it is saying in Matthew 25, chapter 25, from verses 14 to 30.
chapter 25, reading from verse 14 through verse 30. And I begin. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country, who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability, and immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gave two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and satisfied, settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you deliver to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you rule over, ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you deliver to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. The Lord said to him, Well done. Good and faithful servant, you have been faithful over a few things. I will make you grow over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Then he who had received one talent came and said, Lord, I know you to be a hard man. Reap it where you need to be a hard man. Reap it where you have not sown, and gather where you have not scattered seed. And I said, and I was afraid, and went and hid your talent in, into the ground. Lord, there you have what is yours. But this, but his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown, and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money in the bankers, and at my coming, I will have received back my own with interest. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who have ten talents. For to everyone he has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even that he has will be taken away. Thirty eight and last. And cost pass the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. Therefore, we will be in a nothing of teeth. A portion of the Lord is going to be We continue to worship now with one musical ministry by the youth choir, after which the sermon will be presented to us by Sister Jane Morgan.
for this privilege. That's what I consider it. I'm thankful for this privilege. Now, the scripture was read so ably by Sister MacDonald. I want to use the opportunity to also commend the young people. Come on, let's pray for them. Hallelujah. May God continue to have his way in your lives as you seek to serve. Amen. Yes, so I want to commend you. I want to quickly just touch on some verses that were read already, but I want to look at them from the message translation. Just a few of the verses. And so, it says, He called his servants together and delegated responsibilities. And we know that he gave them things, right? Yes. After a long absence, the master of those three servants came back and settled with them. The one given $5,000 showed him how he had doubled his investment. His master commended him. Good work. You did your job well. From now on, be my partner. The servant with the 2000 showed him that he had doubled his master's investment. His master commended him. Good work. You did your job well. From now on, be my partner. The servant given 1,000 said, Master, I know how you have had standards and hate careless ways and you demand the best. I was afraid I might disappoint you, so I found a good hiding place and secured your money. Here it is, safe and sound, down to the last the master was furious. That's a terrible way to live. It's criminal to live cautiously like that. If you knew I was after the best, why did you do less than the least? The least you could have done would have been to invest the sum in the bankers where at least I could have gotten a little interest. Take the thousand and give it to the one who risked the most. And get rid of this play safe who won't go out on a limb. Throw him out into altar darkness. There end is a portion of God's holy work. Now, the young people were sharing based on the question that they were given. And the third presenter spoke about be partners with God. You remember when she was talking about being partners? Yes, spoke about being partners with God. And I'm going to continue on that same vein. That's why I say I'm just here to put the ice thing on the key. When we speak about a partner, we're talking about someone engaged in an activity with another. And so we can use marriage as an example of a partnership and you know there's, there's partnership as a type of business. Amen? Now when we think about partnership as a type of business, it is where different persons are coming together and they will invest their money. They have the same goal and objective and so they are putting their money together with the aim of making profits. We understand that, correct? I want you to talk with me today, little Grace. Yes. So they pool their resources in a partnership, and it means that they will share the profits, or they will also share the losses. Amen? Now, in partnership in business, there's a specific type of partner called the silent partner. Say that with two, those two words for me. Silent partner. Now, who is the silent partner? In business, the silent partner is the partner that puts investment in the business but does not 
say, I've been given something. I got an investment. Say that for me. I got an investment because you did. No, the master returned after a while. I'm not going to say he did that this so stop here. So I established the fact that we have all been given abilities. And it's based on what? Our purpose. The next thing I want us to understand is that because we have been given investment, we have a responsibility. Amen? We have what? We have a responsibility. No, at the end of the day, it's up to us what we do. But we have what? We have a responsibility. And you might ask, to do what? To use the resources that you have been given. You have a responsibility to use the talent the gifts, the abilities, the resources that the silent partner invested. You have a responsibility to use them. And so, one of two things might happen. We might say, boy, we're not really sure what to do. But then, while God is not saying to us, on a daily basis. Sister Lisi, go and sing over there. Sister Geraldine, you need to perform the po uh, po uh, write another poem for next Sunday. Uh, keyboard player, you need to. Different circumstances and situations keep popping up. Not true. That demands of us to put ourselves in position and to do something. And these circumstances and situations come up in so many different places. So you're not only called to do something in church. It, it can be in the workplace, in your home, in the community, at school, just about anywhere. But you have the responsibility to use the resources that you were given. As a matter of fact, your responsibility is to maximize the resources Well, 
organization for battered women. I played and performed in benefit concerts. I entered JCDC with songs and poems that I wrote. I impacted the children in my school. Or the response might be, Lord, I didn't do anything. I thought I should have been made a singer and you did not make me a singer. So because you didn't make me a singer, I didn't do anything. Lord, Here is ten. You gave me two. Here is four. 
the world. In other words, he has used for it. He will invest it. He will put it to work. He knows what to do with it. And since you don't know what to do with it, give it to him who knows what to do with it. I'm going to put up the decorations. I'm going to 
you are unable to identify what you have been given. But don't allow the investment to go to waste. Don't allow the investment to go to waste. And so God has called us as partners. He has called us into a wonderful partnership. Is there anybody here today that is saying, yes, God, I am here and I'm ready to work with you in this partnership. So as we come to a close of stewardship and we're looking at doing our best, what is your commitment today?